Hello! And, yep, that, that is me. And I believe that is also Liz. It is me! Hello! Hello, everyone! Lovely to see you all. I always am happy to see Liz, but especially during RPG Clinic. Yeah, um, I, I want to be a guest all the time, but I can't. Well, I mean, you can't be a guest all the time because you have a life, but... You know, you can be a guest when you like. I'm happy when you're a guest. I'm happy that... Thank you for having me today, John. Very excited. <laughs> Very excited. Well, we've, we've got a bunch of people in the chat. Most notably, we have a lurking Scott <laughs> who, is, who is sitting there checking things out. I do have a Liz-shaped hat. Don't we all? Hashtag lurking what? Scott. <laughs> Scott's just nervous because he's he knows he's next. Haha, <laughs> Scott. So, um, I have in front of us a blank character sheet, which for me is one of the best things in the entire world, because it is a mass of possibility. But soon it will not be so blank. We're going to make sure that Liz gets her shit all over it. Get a, get a smear of shit all over this sheet. Oh my. Oh, starting it off really on a high note. <laughs> Start, starting off on a high note, folks. The, yeah. This is happening. Um, Now, you might have to full size this in order to be able to read the sheet itself perfectly. And I should point out that while I will be editing it, you won't see my edits in real time. You'll see it in, you know, with a couple of seconds delay. Uh, I'm not quoting any of that. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So, uh, first things first, Liz. Um, yes, John. We have we have this character sheet in front of you, and I'm sure that you're, as you are aware, uh, I will make sure that you know the very basics of what I've already decided for the game, and then you can just choose what you think uh, we should be focusing on next. Uh, so, number one. We are setting this chronicle in present day Montreal. Uh, number two, we are um, granting you one extra freebie point, um, which is designed for you to be able to take the merit language so that you can speak French, but you are not required to take this, but it, that's why I'm giving it to you. Um, number three, wherever you choose to end up, um, my recommendation would be that we are going to end up in an Anglophone area of Montreal. So NDG, Westmount, um, the West Island, that kind of thing. Not because it's bad to be in the French section of Montreal, but because since we are presenting the game in English, we might as well make it true to form. Um, I have already informed the chat that there are two kith for which I have a small restriction in place. The first is that if you play a puka, you must lie. So I'm not letting you well, unless you spend willpower, so I'm not letting you off the hook. You have to roleplay that. And the second is that if you choose to play a Slua, you must whisper, which means that there may be some tech issues that we'd have to work out so that you'd still be mm -hmm. audible. But the first thing that I'm going to do before anything else is we're going to put your name. Liz the Biz. Liz the Biz. That's that's the name we're yes. going with. Yes. Yes, please. That's the name we're going with. I. Uh, yeah. So your name is going on the sheet as the player. Congratulations. We'll we'll tidy it up a little bit okay. um, as we go. Um, this won't be obviously your final final sheet, but you will get your name. I, I'm tattooing it on my body after this, so it better be final. Who am I? <laughs> Roxborough Pier full represent. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> um, all right. So have you given any thought to your character so far? Uh, I, I would say that yes, yes, I have, John. Awesome. Uh, we're open at page 148 on the Changeling the Dreaming 20th Anniversary Edition PDF. Uh, that is the character creation chart. We'll be bouncing around as we go. So if you happen to be one of the lucky ones who have access to this, by all means, open it up. Um, we're also going to greet 
uh, Krister, one of the writers for the 20th anniversary edition. And of course, we have to salute our incredible mods, Aragorn and Captain Daff. Thanks for being here. Okay. So what were your thoughts so far? Uh, thoughts in terms of what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Or just general thoughts? Uh, I, I, I like Well, for dinner, I really wanted pizza. And what did you do And ended up not getting pizza. I ended up getting poutine from Basha for the first time ever. Because you can't ever. get poutine from Cote St. Louis Barbecue. I know. It's a very sad state of affairs right now. Incredibly sad state so of affairs. So that's been on my mind more than is maybe healthy for a human <laughs> being. Uh, in terms of changeling, so I feel like a number of people have already guessed at this, um, but I would like to play a she. Um, uh -huh. I'm looking to challenge myself by uh, playing a character that is is as different from characters that I've played in the past as possible, and she really prevents a very good uh, presents a very good challenge for me. So that's what I'm going to try. Well, that's a definitely a good reason to pick a character. Um, mm -hmm. I like challenges. You like challenges. I do. Um, I do. Now there are two different kinds of she in the game. There are autumn she, and there mm -hmm. are uh, Arcadian she. Did you have an idea as to which one you would prefer to play? Yeah, I would like to play an Autumn She. All right. So on our character sheet, we've updated your kith. Now, the the concept of having a an Autumn She means that you are a she who adopts the changeling way. Instead of forcing a human soul right out of the body, you've learned how to integrate yourself with the existing human soul much like all the other changelings do, um, which has kind of an interesting connotation to it. It means that um, among the Arcadian she, you're seen as kind of lesser, but among commoners, they may be more inclined to uh, trust or like you because you stayed behind when everyone else fucked off back to Arcadia. So there we go. Um, coming up one she boxer. I'm not sure the Lars. I'm not sure where we're headed there. So find um, out in five minutes time. Natural leaders who stayed behind when their cousins fled and now occupy an uncomfortable place between the common folk and their Arcadian kin. Now this was a question. I feel like this is a good time to bring that up. I had a question about that. Sure. Would it be, cause I know in exalted there's um, you know, you have your past selves that you can remember. And then with changeling, it's a little bit different. It's a background so, known as remembrance. Yes. Um, so in terms of like the ones who stayed behind, would that have been me myself and I'm really, really old? Or well, is it, are we talking my ancestors? So how long ago did. So if happen? you're an autumn she, it means that you have, you could have crystallized when you choose um, as long as it's within your actual lifespan. So no, you're not like 700 years old. Uh, okay. You could have crystallized you know, yesterday for all I know. Um, however, your Fae soul um, has had various incarnations through life as an autumn she. Um, Arcadian she, when, when their human host dies, their soul goes who knows where. It's one of the mm -hmm. great mysteries. But autumn she, if I remember correctly, uh, do uh, reincarnate inside a different host later on. So is the idea then that all of your that your soul is always the same kith uh yes your soul is always okay. the same kith cool yeah. that is awesome i did not know that yes uh hello ian ian being the oh it's and it's happy birthday Woo! Ian, although that might be tomorrow happy birthday to you happy birthday to you. or today happy for birthday. certain people in the chat um, changelings are so changelings are exalted who reincarnate into new mortals, or is it just she? All changelings um, reincarnate um, into essentially their their fairy souls are born into new human hosts. Uh, it's actually kind of similar to an exalted essence in that way. Uh, however, it's uh, their the she the Arcadian she. Uh, don't actually share with their human host. They force the human soul right out. Hmm. Terrible. 
It's appalling. Uh, but thankfully you don't have that. Now, if you guys want a picture of she, uh, she are um, the most beautiful of all the uh, beings living in the world of darkness today. Uh, very elfin. Um, one of the best descriptions I've ever seen is um, just imagine Kate Blanchett in Lord of the Rings, uh, especially when she gets pissed. I always do. <laughs> so there you go. Birthday pancake. There you go. Winter already certainly feeling it. I miss winter, uh, Captain Def. Uh, around here, anyway. If I was in Montreal, I would not miss winter at all. So, now that we've got your kith out of the way, uh, the next eh. thing that we're going to look at is your seeming. Uh, so, were you interested in playing a childling, a wilder, or a grump? Now, remember that this actually has nothing to do with your age. It has more to do with your outlook on... Um, on changeling life. Childlings are still kind of wide-eyed and new. Uh, they're all about trying new things. Wilders are more about adventure and uh, you know, pushing forward, pushing your own limits. And grumps are more about stability and, and trying to uh, keep things safe for the sort of the next generation. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about wilder. It's probably what I'd recommend. Um, I imagine that uh, Wilder would probably be the default in this particular chronicle. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the others are thinking, but I wouldn't be surprised if we all ended up as Wilders. It's possible. Wild um, I, Wilders! I imagine we're probably not going to see a Childling, but we might. Um, at least it won't be as uh, difficult to fit in as it used to be with uh, um, the old rules in which Childlings were children literally yeah. children. so now that we've got your seeming uh we're going to ignore your motley for now because perfect you i have no idea what that is <laughs> motley motley is like the equivalent of your circle um a changeling motley oh. is a group so if yes. you had a name for your group that's where it would go but i'm voting have... for team awesome so maybe we could put that in until uh team awesome It'll be on my own sheet for my own purposes. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to have a look at your court. Ooh. So this is Seely versus Unseely. Um, or, I mean, you. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could try to make a play to be in the Shadow Court, although I probably would disallow that for a player character. So the courts basically have different outlooks on um, various parts of changeling life uh it used to be that the courts were bitter enemies now not so much um it's quite common for you to have friends that cross court lines although there is still some people who are traditionalist and you know like very much are like we stick with our own kind type so between the two courts um we have the seely court and the unseely court and usually the easiest way that i have to describe them is that the Seelie Court is the embodiment of the unrelenting heat of summer combined with the rejuvenating growth of spring. It exemplifies light, new life, and order, um, but they have a code, the Seelie Code, and they have four tenets. Death before dishonor, love conquers all, beauty is life, and never forget a debt. Whereas the Unseelie Code is the embodiment of the icy chill of winter combined with the bountiful harvest of autumn, the court exemplifies night, culmination in chaos it sees itself as the liberator of individuals and the eternal enemy of banality and its code is change is good glamour is free honor is a lie and passion before duty now do either of those leap out at you or are you still kind of thinking about it at the moment it's funny i was so like set for a while like up until just this moment at being Seely. Mm -hmm. And then you read it out again and I'm like, oh, based off of my current character concept, it also lends itself no, to it's not a, It isn't a straight jacket. Um, yeah. And it is, it, it's, while it does have some um, gameplay mechanics and, and you, the, your allegiance in court will matter to some, uh, it, first of all, you can change Courts, mm -hmm. although typically that's because of a big event in your life as opposed to just i feel like unsealy today um but it also means that just because um 
something in the code you may agree with doesn't mean that automatically that puts you in that court, right? So if, right. for instance, you truly be believed that love was one of the greatest things ever, that doesn't automatically make you silly just because they believe that love conquers all. Okay. So I am going to tentatively stick with Seely for now, but if mm -hmm. we decide over the course of this discussion that it's better to change, I am happy to do so. Absolutely. Remember that nothing on this sheet is set in stone. Um, even um, as we play, you're able to change things in the first few sessions as we did with Exalt Twitch. But because we haven't even started, um, anything on this sheet can potentially change right down to your kith. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have to worry about that right now. Aragorn's keeping awfully good track. Look at that. Hello, Griffin what girl. What a lady. Um, all right. So then the next thing that we're going to look at are your mm -hmm. legacies. So your yes. legacies are two terms that help describe your character in terms of you know, not necessarily like, I wouldn't say it's personality, but certainly they're, they're parts of you that, make up um, quite a bit of who you are um, in terms of your, your concept. Uh, I personally, um, here, let's uh, put it out right out here. So all changelings have both a Seelie and Unseelie legacy. Her current court usually determines which one she follows, her primary legacy, but her second legacy can influence your actions and add nuance, but it never overrides your primary legacy. Um, and sometimes you change courts, and at that point, your legacies will almost always also switch. Um, and each one has a quest and a ban. So if you fulfill your quest, then that means that you regain willpower. Mm -hmm. If you have a ban as well, and if you ever violate your ban, you also forfeit a point of willpower. Um, you can go against your primary legacies ban without penalty if you can justify it using your secondary legacy. So there are many different legacies here. Yes. Um, so for the Seelie legacies, we have Bumpkin, Courtier, Crafter, Dandy, Hermit, Orchid, Paladin, Panderer, Regent, Sage, Saint, Squire, Troubadour, or Wayfarer, or you can come up with one of your own. Now, do you have that there in front of you? I do, yeah. And was there, was there one that you were, were kind of leaning towards? Nothing um, fully encapsulated what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, the closest is probably some kind of combination between like sage and uh, what was the other one? Like orchid. Um, like sage is probably the closest. It's the idea of, of, of sharing but not wisdom it's um like some, something about helping people reach their full potential right so sage kind of came closest to that so that's what i'd settled on um unless you think that one of them fits better well i mean sage definitely helps um you're willing to share your learning um however if you're out to like help because it's not my learning like i'm not i'm not trying to teach people like my wisdom i'm trying to help them see what it is that they want so i would say um that it probably would be and that the music which you can't hear liz is the guardian theme now so now it's all tense. no um so I would say that Sage is probably the best because it's still you trying to help somebody in order to mm -hmm. um, see them. However, uh, it could also be Saint. Um, the Saint always strives to ease the burden of others for she feels their pain is her own. She doesn't hesitate to give her time, money, or even the shirt off her own back if it helps even one soul in need. But, yeah. And that still doesn't quite fit, right? Not quite. Okay, but I know, like, the chances of finding something that's exactly... Yeah, but we can also come up with our own. So, let's see if you can... Um, oh, they can't hear the music. Maybe the music is way too low for them. Ooh. Because I do that sometimes. Let's, uh, let's give them some... 
Ooh, Aragorn's suggesting a mentor legacy. That's kind of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, that might actually work a little better. I like that. I like um, that, Aragorn. So as a mentor, what would you suggest would be your quest? Like, what? how would you regain willpower? Um, I, I would regain willpower by inspiring somebody to better their life. Okay. And um, what about a ban? Um, so to give, an, my, to give oh, a, a suggestion, like for Sage, the ban is never impede anyone's chosen course of action. Or for Saint, it's never knowingly caused distress or harm to anyone. Okay. So... Yeah, I'll have to think about that one. All right. Something uh, to do with like if my interference makes things worse. I I would uh, say that maybe that. um I would say that maybe it would be um uh that you can't you can't stand to see someone stew in their own problems. Yes. Okay, so now you need an unseely legacy. That one was was easier. All right. What kind of legacy were you looking at? I was looking at Peacock. Ah, <laughs> Scott Peacock. suggested that one for my character. And I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> All right. So we've got your legacies down as Mentor and Peacock. Just so everybody knows what Peacock is. As long as everyone realizes you're the best, everything will be fine. <laughs> everything will be just <laughs> fine. Um to also put it in another way, the quest is when you conclusively prove you are the best at something, regain willpower, but your ban is never admit failure or fault. <laughs> now, this ban doesn't apply to you as long as you are Seely, but it can still influence you. Right. All right. And now we're looking at, and I'm sure that this is going to be your favorite bit, your house. Oh, yeah, right. So you are she, which means that you are most likely a member of one of the noble houses. Now, here's the other thing to, to bear in mind. You are also Seely. So there are going to be some houses which may be less likely to want to accept you. Um, it is possible for you to be Seely in an unseely house. Um, although there are some houses for which this is almost impossible. Like Baylor will fuck you up if they figure out that you're Seely. Mm -hmm. Um, I also know that there are certain uh, limitations placed on me because I'm an autumn she. That is correct. There are one like the there actually aren't too many houses available to me. <laughs> no, but one of the things that I would potentially recommend, based on what you're saying, because you were talking to me earlier and saying that you weren't that interested in being somebody who is all up on the court. Exactly. So I might s suggest. I mean, this is just off the top of my head that you actually consider ha house skaha. Oh, interesting. Because I was going with Liam. Sorry, Skaha or Liam. Both of those are actually good choices. Um, Skaha very specifically are, um, they're ones who kind of eschew politics. Ooh. They, they very specifically say, um, while there are technically a Sealy house, they hold few lands and rarely get involved in politics beyond a local level. House Skaha declines to put forward a head of house as the others do and stands only a handful of representatives in the Parliament of Dreams, none of whom claim to represent the house as a whole. Individual Skaha are nearly as likely to be unseely as Seely and suffer no particular scorn from their fellow house members if they are. For what it's worth, efforts by other Seely houses to get the Grey Walkers more politically involved are politely but firmly rebuffed, as are entreaties by the unseely court to change size. Ooh, that does sound kind of cool. So that's Skaha. Um, now, Liam is another good choice. Uh, House Liam are very much all about kind of like protecting mortals, protecting the the dreamers that remain. Um, they're a little more loaded down with banality, um, but at the same time, they have particular affinity with mortals and those in pain, taking on burdens others cannot bear. So I actually think both of these houses kind of fit. Skaha has less political ambition than Liam. Yeah. So if you mm. have if you have ideas there, now we can also leave it blank and come back to it. 
Here's, I'll give you an example though. If you're a Liam, your boon is that you hold a particular affinity with mortals and those in pain. Mm -hmm. um, you can lay hands on a mortal and spend one glamour to reduce their banality by one. And you can lay hands on another changeling and spend one glamour to reduce their nightmare by one. Which I How really like. Yeah. However, <laughs> you start with an additional dot of banality and you can't ravage for glamour. So there, it's harder for you to just get a quick fix of glamour on your way through. It takes time for you to get glamour rather than just tearing it away from somebody. Now, for House Kaha, they excel at all forms of close combat and seem to have a pretty natural skill at going unnoticed. They make no sound when fighting unless they choose to do so. And they receive a minus one difficulty in all stealth rolls. And you can never botch a stealth roll. And you get a plus one die on all brawl and melee rolls. But your flaw is that you actually have... Um, Social rolls at a plus two difficulty when dealing with other nobles or royalist commoners. Mm. Um, and because you are an autumn she, you cannot learn sovereign ever. Okay. I think based off of just uh, the the light descriptions there, I'm I'm gonna go with Liam. I All think right. I'm pretty pretty leaning towards that. So let's put Liam in for now. And we can always change that if we see fit. Yeah, that's what the backspace is for. Yep. House Liam also doesn't have nearly as bad a, a flaw as in second edition, where all Liam were considered Oathbreakers right from the start, which oh is gosh. like, God damn. <laughs> it's like, Dead that's, balls. It, it basically made it incredibly <laughs> difficult to play Liam properly. <laughs> um, now, did you have a name in mind? Uh... First name Sophia, last name pending. <laughs> All right, so let's just call her Sophia for now. Yeah. And let's throw that out there. Let's make sure that that's updated for everyone to see. Boom. Now, now that you've made these choices, there's a few things that we got to throw into your sheet right away. Okay. First things first, and this is always fun for, for everybody, is that you have um, an extra two dots in appearance right away. You're hot. By default. <laughs> Don't even have to do anything. <laughs> yes. So that is right away something that you... Um, have as an advantage. Is this one? Hmm. All right, I'll have to figure out how to actually fill that in properly on the sheet. Um, so you have that. Second thing is you have an extra dot of banality right away. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you have to choose between getting either plus one glamour or plus one willpower. Oh. Because you're a wilder. I hadn't thought about that. Hey, I'm leaning towards willpower for now. Can we say willpower? We can say willpower for now, absolutely. Yay. So now that we've got that, let's see here. Do, do, do. Now I just have to see how I'm going to get this uh, particular. Oh, it's because it's on top. Aha. Aha. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm just, I'm working with the, the PDF as I go. And it's not always the easiest um, to do it this way, but because uh, it's not a fillable PDF currently that I have access to. Um, oh my god, Krista, that sounds so good. <sighs> what's what sounds Eating so good? Peanut butter and cookie ice cream. Oh holy crap! That's all I want now. All right, so if I rasterize <laughs> this, I should be able to fill in dots. Oh, flatten. yes. She woke up like this. I'm a little delayed in that. 
Aber ja. Oh, Sophia, komm, Pepe. Komm, Pepe. It's so tempting, but I would never stop laughing. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yep. But how long is that really going to last? But it means that we'll continue laughing about this forever. That's true. Every time we see it on my character sheet. That is true. I'm, I won't. Uh, I won't lie. That's that's absolutely true. Whew. All right. So that means that currently you have, in terms of your, um, you have five willpower to start. Mm -hmm. You have four banality. Okay. And you have three glamour. Or four okay. glamour, sorry, four. Four, okay. And you already have three dots in appearance because of being she. So, awesome. now we go on to how we fill in some dots. This is the part that some people are all about. Some people are all about the dots. Um, now, for physical, social, and mental, you have to choose a primary, secondary, and tertiary. Yes. So I had said uh, social first, mm -hmm. and then mental, and then physical. Awesome. So with that in mind, that means that you have seven dots to distribute in your social, five in your mental, and three in your physical, knowing that you already have one dot in each and three dots in appearance. You are also allowed, if you choose, to go above five in your appearance. You are the only if allowed. Well, Arcadian she can too, but... The only one who gets to be that hot. <laughs> Sophia's going to be a weedy little thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily true, because you can't always boost things afterwards using freebie points and all that. But <laughs> I just want to hear John try to represent that in game. I've put up with, um, put up with, I have had a player who had appearance seven and surreal quality, which was Good not Lord. fun. Yeah, no, the surreal quality made it difficult. They were... The problem was that it was in a LARP, and it's very difficult to kind of be like, so in a LARP, this person is so attractive that everyone has to sort of just shut up and pay attention to them all the time. And she was like, it was a little difficult, right, to, to have somebody be like, I'm not cool all the time. I'm this hot. And like, there's no way to represent Appearance 7 in a LARP straight up. So it was tough. But uh, anyway, did you have ideas on how you wanted to distribute your dots yeah so okay remind me how many i get for uh for physical uh for, for social start? we'll start with social you get seven yeah. dots to distribute seven so what did i do before so i did um okay yeah so plucky hero if she chooses to go above appearance five she'll be hotter than both three fates shadow and speaks of silence damn, damn. and i get I get bonus points at the end, right? To go back yes, you do. over these. These are like preliminary, right? Yes, you get 15 freebie points, but different things cost different amounts of freebie. Okay. So I think for now, I want to be, so I'm talking total, what I'd like to get at. Uh, mm -hmm. Appearance four. Okay. Charisma four and manipulation two. So one, two, three, four. You spent five dots. Now you need to spend two more. Okay, so let's do one more in manipulation. Okay. And one more in appearance. Right. Boom. Cool. So what we have here is you have now appearance five, charisma four, and manipulation three. Sweet. Let's move on to your mentals. That's next. Yes. So mentals, you get five dots to distribute. Okay. Uh, did I do this right? And yes, plug... Um, um, Ian has made a very good point. One is below average, two is average for a human, three is above, four is amazing, and five is world class. Appearance five, like I would say that appearance four would be enough for you to be um, close to being a supermodel. Appearance five would mean that you are like among the top. Hashtag hot Sophia. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 
She might become hotter. We'll see. We'll see. Do I want to be hotter than three fates? I just don't know. I don't even think that's possible. Uh, okay. Quinn, physical so, one, one, one. Mentals one, one, one. Social four, four, five. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Um, okay. So let's do a uh, mental. Yep. Perception. I would like to be at four. So you spent three of your five dots. Okay. Intelligence two, wits two. Cool. And then we're going to move on to your physical. Okay. You get three That's dots. That's going to be spend. easy. One in each, please. One in each. The standard. All right. So that completes this, the attributes section of the sheet. Um, Attributes posted, done. <laughs> now, we move on to abilities. So here oh, are a few Jesus. rules that we have for abilities. Talents, skills, and knowledges. So here's the difference between the three. Talents are things that you can just get better at with practice. Skills are things that um, you get better at with practice and some teaching. Knowledges are things you have to study. Um, if you try to use a talent for which you have no dots, you can. No problem. You just roll your attribute. If you try to use a skill for which you have no dots, the difficulty is up by one. And then you just roll your um, attributes. For a knowledge, you can't do it at all. So Shit. now that you know, 13.95 is how okay. we divide these. Now we're going to see how terrible Liz's math is. Are we ready? Uh, I would like to start with talents at 13. All right. Alex. Now here's the <laughs> other thing. Talents for Unless you're spending freebie points, you can't go above three. Yep. Okay. Good. Did that properly. So. All right. Go for it. Let's do leadership. Three. Mm -hmm. Leadership three. Yep. Yep. Then I would like Empathy 3. Empathy 3. Then I would like Expression 3. Expression is at 3. Uh, Kenning 2. Kenning 2. And Athletics 2. Athletics 2. So I'm going to point out just while, mm -hmm. we're, while we're here that what you've done so far is that you've created somebody who is very good at some things. One thing is you have perception four, but you have alertness at zero. So mm -hmm. that's like your perception awareness in exalted. Mm -hmm. If that was your intent. Um, and otherwise you are still doing just fine. You're not very good at lying. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to make a note of that, but that might be okay. Yep. So subterfuge, just so that you know, Sutterfuge allows a character to project a facade while concealing her true motives and feelings. <clears throat> so there mm -hmm. you go. Yep. All right. We're going to go on. So of skills and knowledges. Okay. Let's go with skills at nine. Skills at nine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> melee one. Boop. Boop. Uh, animals two. Animal Ken. Yes. All right. Uh, etiquette three. Okay. And then performance three. And I think I need to give you a specialty, right? Uh, for performance specifically, mm -hmm. um, a player must choose a specialty. Yeah. So, so music. Uh, and if you need a specific instrument, uh, it says here under specialties, specific instruments. So yes. Harp, please. So I have tossed in yeah. harp. Basket weaving. Yeah, definitely basket weaving. Basket. <laughs> harp is now your selected specialty for performance. Now that doesn't right. mean that you can't use, I mean, I personally judge it this way. Others may uh, choose differently, but the way that I see it is Harp is your specialty, but you can still roll performance on like singing or acting. Um, 
your difficulty may be changed because it's not your specialty, but you still this have- This was exactly my question. Okay, good, I'm glad. Because I was yeah. looking for somebody <clears throat> who was like, like well-rounded in shit like, <laughs> shit like, shit like dancing, singing and stuff that specializes yeah. no, I, in, I, uh, I, in the heart. I think that it's a little too harsh to make you buy performance again, just so that, that you would be insane. do that, so. Oh, right. I don't know about insane. Yes, underwater but... basket weaving. Underwater yeah, as basket as a weaving. secondary specialty. Don't Absolutely. worry, guys. I have a plan for the transport of the harp. Girls got you. It's fine. Hopefully. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. Knowledges. You have five dots to spend. Yes. Uh, okay. So, um, gray mare. Yep. Two. Uh, okay. Academics, one. And politics, mm -hmm. two. Politics, two. Why are you not giving me the business? So, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Animal Ken. <laughs> Damn it, Krista, you're giving it away. What's wrong with that? So, oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Aragorn just You're shared a, a very funny image that I hadn't thought of. It's great. Okay. I, why are you not filling in with uh, what I want? Why is this happening? No. Why is this happening? Let's just do that. And so Grimmere 2 um Sorry, it was Greymere 2. What were the others? Uh, academics 1. Academics 1. Politics 2. Politics 2. All right. Now, I am going to judge that this means yeah. that, for instance, for computer, technically this means you don't know how to use one. I'm going hmm. to judge this as because using computers are so common these days, you can use one, you're just not good at it. Um, and you can't yeah. do anything beyond, like, you know, very simple computing tasks. Yes. Um, that that I'm fine with. Yeah. So, like, you could type up a paper. Um, you could, you know, Google something, but you're just not going to be very good at it. And if it involves any more than, like, five seconds worth of thought, you're just not going to know. Kay. You just don't spend a whole lot of time. That's cool. She says, regretting it three weeks down the line. Mom level. Oh my god, there was a grandma who plays Skyrim. Yep. Which I discovered today, greatest thing I've ever seen. Okay. All right. <laughs> now that we've got those, we're yeah. going to move on. Okay. Yes, we do. We're going to move on to your backgrounds. Now, for backgrounds... One of the things that I will say is that you do have the option of um, merging your backgrounds with the other players. So if you decide, for instance, that you all want to have access to a freehold, you could put a dot or two into it and then have them also put dots into it to combine them. Some backgrounds can be done this way. Others can't. Yeah, that's very possible. Scott and Kate and I were kind of tossing around ideas of doing something like that. So okay. subject to change. Subject to change. Um, however, have you decided on any backgrounds that you know you want? You get, for backgrounds, five dots. Uh, okay, so... And backgrounds oh. are, by the way, among the cheapest to buy up with free. Why did I write? Oh, that must be why I put in six here, because I assume I'm going to be buying one with three B points. Um, but, uh, okay, so I, I would like one in Dreamers. Okay. Possibly going to buy more later. And then, um, so getting into this Chimera thing, John, I don't know if you remember. I remember. The, okay. So guys, what I want to do is Sophia plays a harp. She's actually a busker. So plays a harp on the street. And when she's not playing the harp, the harp transforms into a lizard. 
and the lizard just rides around around her neck. Uh, that is how you carry a harp. You have it transform into a lizard. So I am assuming that that is chimera <clears throat> dots, right? And yes, I was thinking this would it might be considered be a chimerical companion. Yes. Now, one thing that I will point out is that normal people can't see a uh, a chimera. Yes. Which means that they wouldn't be able to hear the harp. Yeah. So that's a problem. And that's why I wanted to ask you if there would be like right. basically basically it wouldn't transform when they, people can see it. I don't know. All right. Well, I know can, how I make that we work. We can definitely work really it out. It. We can make it work. Um because it's also not like what you're asking for is entirely OP, right? Like yeah, I don't need the lizard to have any special powers at all. And I want the lizard to be named Mab. M A B. I have a picture of it on on Pinterest. I'm gonna I'm gonna share it if that's okay. Yes, please do. Um you may not need to spend more than one dot on your chimerical companion at that Ooh. point. Um if that's literally all it does. Um what were the other backgrounds you were interested in? Uh the only other one that I had written well, I did have title because I know you had talked to me about right. how I should probably have one, um, yep. but I didn't have anything specified. Uh, and I also have resources. Um, resources. I'm thinking resources two or maybe three. So if um, you're a busker, that I know, would be an, I know. Like, that would be on another level of busking. Yes. And if that's okay, if that's what you want, um, then that's fine. Um, how many dots in title did you want? I don't know. Because right. I don't know exactly what I'm doing in terms of title. All right. So tell you what, I'm going to put resources, title, chimerical companion, and dreamers on backgrounds, but we're not going to spend any dots yet. We'll talk about that now. Perfect. Thank you. So What's a busker, Kung Fu Fenris? So a busker is somebody who, like an artist basically who either uh, draws, paints, or uh, most commonly plays music on the street and people give them money. Street performer, that's it. All right. I'm just closing. I'm realizing that I'm, I'm, I've got a lot of images open that I probably shouldn't, so. We're just gonna do that. Uh oh. That. That. And some of them are quite large. So there we go. All right. So one thing that you also don't have in here is you don't have anything that is shared. These are all yours. Yeah. And that's okay. Remember that you also have plenty of freebies to spend later on. Sounds sketchy. Uh, <laughs> literally, Aragorn, it is the Dark Pack logo that you see down below. Um, the one provided by White Wolf is gigantic. So I had that open and I should probably not. Um, but uh, anyway, now that we have those, uh, I'm going to say, so for your chimerical companion, uh, if I come down here to backgrounds, or do, 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 do. So, for Chimerical Companions, uh, we're going to go to page 320. 320. Which is how we build them. Um, I'm not actually going to um, build the whole thing right away. But what I am going to say is that it has... Let's see. Two... So it's going to need the shapeshift read. Yes. It's going to need the uh, weird read. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm going to rule that if literally all it is is a harp and it transforms into a lizard, is the lizard sentient? Um, the lizard can come when it's called. So it yeah, so it's like a pet. Like I can communicate with the lizard, but it doesn't like go off and do fancy shit for me. Yeah, it, it just transforms it. into a harp. I'm going to say that that's as a chimerical companion. We're going to throw that right down as one. That's a one Thank dot. Thank you, John. I'll build it. Um, 
we don't need to build it right away because it's a little bit more complicated, but I'm just going to rule that if it's literally just so that you can have a harp and a lizard, I'm not that worried about charging you a shit ton for it. So yes. let's just throw that down there as a uh, one point, um, as a one point uh, uh, option. Chimera, yep. you guys need to understand that this is how a lot of character creation goes with John. It's me being like, so this is what I was thinking. And John's like, I'll figure out a way to make it work. With that's, this. Not, that's not. <laughs> okay. And he always does such a good job with all my stupid ideas. Yay. <laughs> Another craftless group. We're not necessarily sure, Angel Wick. Maybe it it's will okay. be. Okay. Maybe it will be, but. I'm willing to bet no, because I'm pretty sure I know what Kate wants to play. So I'm willing to bet that no, it's not going to be a craftless group. So uh, let's move on to your title. Yeah. So for title specifically, um, title has um, five levels. At one, you're a squire. At two, mm -hmm. you are a knigget or a lady. <laughs> Um, three, you're a baron or baroness, four, count or countess, and five, a duke or duchess. Now, I'm going to say you're probably not above a knight, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Based on what you've been describing about the characters so far, I doubt very much that you're a baroness. Yeah. But it's cool. possible that you've done some cool shit. So are you a squire or are you a knight? Now, remember that a squire is... We're not thinking squire in terms of like the little punk who like runs up behind a knight and is like, I've got your armor, sir. Right? Like a squire is a noble. Now, you are a noble if you have title, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you get to tell people what to do all the time. Right? Like mm -hmm. if you are a knight, you could be a knight with no land and no vassals, in which case you don't directly command anybody. You just carry the title, which carries social weight and it carries a certain amount of benefit um but it doesn't give you like direct control over it and for a squire it's like a step down a squire is the lowest level of noble you can be and still be considered it. Hmm. and would i have had to would i have to justify this in my backstory like if i was a knight say um if i was lady sophia in general if you are a knight you have you have done something to earn this title, but that something could also be you played the harp for somebody and did an amazing job and they were feeling very generous at the time. Yeah. Right? Like I kind of like that idea. I'm inspired by the name of the wind. Um, right. Um, and both. So, or it could, if you have consistently demonstrated that you are an excellent something, then you can get a knighthood out of it. Right? Like the, one of the things, one of the cheap things of this is that, you are she, which means that people are a little more likely to want to throw title at you because you are destined to be. Yeah. She's not Lady Sophia Kofefe. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have an idea as to whether you want to be a knight or a squire uh, or a lady? I, 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 I want to put lady for now, right, I think. So you have title two. Cool. Now, for resources. Specifically for resources, um, if you have no resources, then you doesn't mean that you're fucked. It means that you basically live paycheck to paycheck, and you probably have a roommate, and you like you don't have a whole, you don't have any savings kind of thing. If you're Ray, you live off your rich friends. Yeah, basically. So resources one is the equivalent of you have a working class residence as long as you're careful with money. Mm -hmm. If you have resources two, you're a member of the middle class and can afford to splurge occasionally. Uh, with resources three, you are comfortable. You're a, you have a prominent member of the local community and have a generous line of credit. So if I'll, I'll point this out. If you have resources three, this is the point where people say that you are rich. Um, resources four, wealthy, you're wealthier than most of your peers and rarely use cash, preferring other assets that accrue more wealth than paper money. And for five, you're extremely wealthy. You are the 1%. 
So for five, you literally have like money in the tens of millions. For four, you're approaching a millionaire. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking either two or three. And I would be putting myself at a higher resource rating than would be expected from a busker because I have a very specific idea of what her home looks like and it ain't cheap. <laughs> and it ain't cheap. And it ain't cheap. So right. I feel like I need to justify this. Um, yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm going to throw resources. Um, if I put resources three in there, mm-hmm. then you are at that point, um, you have spent six without buying any dreamers at all. Okay. So resources two or three. Let's say three. And if I need to take it down to two, I shall. All right. So at the moment, we've already spent one freebie point. I'm just mm-hmm. going to make a note of that. Cool. Which is no problem. So we have spent one. Um, and you currently, I'm leaving dreamers on your sheet, but it's at zero. For now. Okay. Because I definitely want one dot there. For sure. Totally but I can that. use my freebie to do that. There we are. I mean, we're we're going through this. It's all good. <laughs> now we're on to arts. Oh, I have not done any prepping any looking this. into the Yay, arts. Have you? It's gonna take forever. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, if you would prefer, we can leave arts behind, arts and realms, and and move on. But we can also. Uh, go through them and talk about them now. Uh, I'm happy to start talking about them. All right. So there are a lot more arts in Changeling 20th than there were in Changeling 2nd Edition. Uh, In Changeling 2nd Edition, there were fewer arts, partially because they put some of those arts into the Kith books, the various different um, books that sort of expanded on each of the Kith. Um, Mm -hmm. But they sort of slammed all of them in here and they've redone them so that they're not quite so broken which is always a good thing. Um, oh, drinks. I don't set up drinks for RPG Clinic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I can. Hold on. Uh, I'm starting the drink counter at one, so you don't have to add it, um, Captain Daff, but the drinks should be there now. Yeah. John is going to read through every single art, just like the EX3 charms. We're Yikes. all going to listen together. Yikes. So, here we go. Um, in each art, there are five levels. Uh, what page are you on, John, by the way? I'm still on the page 149, the oh. character creation chart. Never mind. Okay. Uh, so, the each of the arts has five levels, which means that technically, if we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12... We have 18 arts available, and there's five in each, so we have um, approximately 190 separate spells, as it were. Or, sorry, 90, not 190, 90, 90. I don't know where the extra 100 came in there. Um, We can't name the motley arts but no crafts if we don't know what the other players are playing at Captain Dad. <laughs> So there are 90 as opposed to an exalted where there are considerably more than 90. The thing is that they're also more flexible. Um, Mm -hmm. They can do more things. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give the arts. Do you have the list in front of you? The, Uh, the, the short list. Yes. Yeah. The short list. Do any of these stand out? Okay. Um, Definitely spring. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. You did not Where's dark it? elven. You actually made it halfway through. Uh. Wow, I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation. Mm-hmm. Oniromancy? No, that's correct. Oh, sweet. I think that one. I'd like mm-hmm. to hear more about. Uh, possibly naming. Ooh. 
because Patrick Rothfuss. And uh, da, da, da. yeah, let's start with those three. Start with those three. All right. You've well, picked... possibly, possibly primal. Sorry, possibly, possibly primal. primal. Okay, you've picked some very interesting arts. So I mm. will give you some things, and this might actually inform your character. Cool. Okay. So the first part we're going to start with is actually naming. Uh, naming is a very special art. Now, I should tell you, do you know about unleashing, first of all? I feel so, like I read it, but don't know. All right, so let me, let me give you some, um, some background here. So you have these five different levels of an art, and they're very specific, deliberate ways in which you can use the art. It has like specific rules that say, I do this, I roll these dice, and it has this effect. Unleashing is you basically casting out to the dreaming being like, help me based on the art itself and it can potentially do what you need but instead of you doing a very descriptive thing like saying i want to shoot a fireball over there it's like a command such as hurt that man save my friend restore the grove right it's just a very simple like this is what i would like it's sort of like a hail mary pass in that it could potentially do everything that you want could also potentially do everything that you want except also put you in a difficult situation afterwards okay. um it's also an easy way to start gaining nightmare dice but it does mean that if for instance you have a level in say primal um it means that if you could just shout out burn this and it might work even if you don't have the specific level of the art to set something on fire it's just a little more uncontrolled a little riskier Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, it does. Awesome. It does. Uh, yes, naming is from first edition. Naming was also absolutely freaking broken in back in the first edition player's guide. It was nuts. But anyway, so the reason why we're starting with naming is because naming is a very special art. Um, it is rare. That doesn't mean you can't have it. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Um, and it very specifically deals with some things that um, changelings have to deal with. So naming names hold power and few are so keenly aware of the potency of titles than the Cathane. discovering a changeling's true name grants authority over the fairy but those who seek a mystic understanding of naming cantrips can reveal hidden truths set others on dangerous or heroic paths and even fundamentally alter someone or something by inscribing a new name into the ledger of the dreaming Every changeling, when they grow up or when they pass their saning, essentially after a year of them being a changeling, get to learn what their name is. And a true name is very powerful. If you know someone's true name, like this says, you actually do hold power. Over them. And yet being somebody who control, who knows about naming um, is someone who is very well respected. Um, Dark Elven there's totally going to be many goats in this campaign because we'll have satyrs whether Yay! they're pcs or npcs and they're gonna be sexy the goats right well, some of them will be so the first level of naming discernment is the first le lesson um mm -hmm. basically you um can understand any language or learn the intended meaning behind anything you can see or hear so you would roll it um, for a specific message. Um, any number of successes allow you to understand a written cipher or foreign language, um, but each success adds an extra die to any pool for contested actions meant to reveal the truth or see through lies during the current scene. So in other words, you're very good at determining if somebody is lying to you after you've cast it, but if somebody writes something in code, the code is just automatically broken. You know it. Okay. The, the second level is um, before you develop the talent and discernment needed for uncovering true names, you learn to apply a more cursory label to something or someone. It fades over time, but the target's identity warps and bends to the nickname provided by the changeling. So a knocker begins calling her mother-in-law Warthog, and then the poor woman begins to snort when she laughs. An arrogant she stole her girlfriend, so a jilted pisky nicknames her ex Stilts 
causing people to see her long, beautiful legs as too long and comical. So in other words, you basically give something a nickname and it starts to adopt traits of that name. Okay. A car nicknamed Clunker doesn't start reliably. Um, a revolver nicknamed Pea Shooter fires bullets that barely break the skin. Nickname a street Murder Lane and suddenly it attracts people who are pretty violent. Um, and the third one is Saning. That's your ability to discern true names. You straight up can find out what the true name is of something. When you go further, then you can start um, giving people um, extra successes on their extended actions, or you can even reweave somebody's name um, at the highest level in order to change. You can change their tastes or habits, their interests or moods. You can change somebody's court. You can turn a gun into a toy. You can change somebody's legacies, abandon or adopt a religious faith. You can rearrange attributes on a character's sheet with enough successes. Damn. So that's naming. So if cool. you choose naming, the reason why I bring it up now is because it this would make you someone quite special. Mm -hmm. um, it would mean that people would treat you with a certain amount of respect because you are a namer, but also you control a certain amount of power which is kind of neat so that's naming okay uh we'll move on to a neuromancy so neuromancy is the ability for you to um deal with dreams so the first level um lets you forge a bridge between the dreaming and your target's mind so that you can enter somebody's dream you have to be able to see them um, or you have to, um, so you have to target someone or something asleep that you either know well or that you can see. So either a stranger that you can see or someone you know who isn't necessarily present. Um, you then enter their dream and disappear from the mundane world. Uh, you start messing with their dreams if you so choose. You can hide in somebody's dreams. You can mess with somebody's dreams in order to fuck them up. The second level is dreamcraft. So while you're in somebody's dream, you can shape their dreams and employ realms to create aspects of that dream. So you can decide if a dream becomes inspiring or terrifying. Um, you can make a dream positive and restful, or you can make it uh, a nightmare. Level three is dream portal. Um, so that while you're in somebody's dream, you can transport things through that dream. You can create a portal so that uh, so their cool. dream becomes a way station. Um, so that there's that interesting bit. And as Christer says, note from chapter seven, you can also sidestep in Oniromancy to enter the dreaming. So there's that too. After that, we'll go on to Primal. So Primal is very specifically um, learning how to deal with uh, elemental substance. So the first one is will o whisper um, mm -hmm. It allows you to speak to any plant, animal, object, or natural feature. However, you can only speak in a whisper, and you hear only whispers in return. And no matter what, you can't communicate with Cold Iron. Cold Iron being silver to werewolves, fire to vampires. It's the thing that changelings fear the most. Mm -hmm. So the second level, Eldritch Prime, is that you can conjure up manifestations of earth, water, wood, fire, or air. You may remember these five elements from other Dude. games. Uh, level three is Oak when and Shield. When did the Fire Nation attack, though? Everything changed then. Everything changed. Everything changed. <laughs> um, the third level is Oak and Shield, which lets you give somebody um, extra health levels. Level four is Elder Form, um, which means that you get to imbue somebody with the very essence of one of the elements to turn them into a living manifestation of that power. What so the <laughs> if you turn, if you enchant somebody with air, they become invisible and can float. Enchant someone with earth, and they soak massive damage. Um, water becomes slick, slippery, and fluid. Wood becomes rooted in place and can't move. Um, fire becomes. Um, sculpted flame 
And then the last one, Dance of the Five Kings, uh, you become the master of five elements. You command, um, and flames and earth and water leap to obey. You, so you become basically the become avatar. a bender. You become yes. Great. And then <laughs> the last one that you had mentioned was spring. Yes. So, spring. Let's call it up here. A lot between those. So spring is all about um, growth, new life, and protection. So the first level. Um, you give energy to a target. Anything that's dormant or frozen will return. Anything barren or void becomes the home of a new spark of life. So you can grow, you can return life to an area. Um, a courtly she ensures that his liege's crops begin to grow this season. A massive chimera slumbers in the near dreaming, but the satyr must rouse it and beg for its help. After watching the writer struggle to put words on the page, a helpful troll plants a seed in the artist's mind that can become the next great story. So, you basically can awaken things, hence its name. The second is Verdant Reclamation. Um, so what this does is it, um, given enough time, nature reclaims everything. And with a little glamour, the change in casting a Verdant Reclamation cantrip can speed up the process. So roots, flowers, trees, and vines sprout from the ground or out of the target itself and covers the surface. If it targets a machine or an object, it becomes unusable until somebody removes all the foliage. Um, a person or creature caught in the cantrip has to contend with flora and do everything they can to pull and tear at the plants so it can like entangle somebody, essentially. Uh, and the third level, Well of Life, is the healing art. Mm. Essentially, it lets you um, imbue something that if somebody eats or drinks of it, they heal up. That's cool. Uh... Level four fairy ring. Um, you can create a circle that offers protection and concealment from outsiders and level five renewal. This is an interesting one. You spend a point of willpower in addition to the required glamour to feel the cantrip. The character, the character must target something dead or inert. The target returns to life. <gasps> However, it only lasts for a certain number of scenes. Oh my God. So those are the four arts that you pointed out. Ooh. Do any of them spring out at you? Yeah, a whole bunch of them spring out at me. <laughs> Damn it. Because they all sound so effing cool. And I'm sure if I'd chosen more and had you read them out to me, they would have jumped out too. Probably. Um. So basically, Oniromancy, I'm super interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, primal and spring I am quite interested in mm -hmm. naming I'm also interested in but maybe at a later point I don't okay. know if I want to start with naming so I want to keep it in mind alright Thank. so you have three dots to spend and you can divide them among three different arts if you choose or you can slime them all into one or put two in one and one in the other Okay, um, I think from what I remember, uh, mm -hmm. from what you said, the first level of Oniromancy, Primal, and Spring were all quite So good. the first level of Spring is Awaken. You can awaken somebody or something or allow, you know, a thought or a crop to start growing properly. The first of um, Primal, mm -hmm. if I could get back up there. The first of Primal is Willow Whisper, the ability for you to uh, communicate with any oh, yeah, I really like that. animal or nature or whatever. And the first of Oneromancy is uh, Dreamwalk, the ability to enter into somebody's dream. Yep. Um, yeah. So I would put one dot in each of those. One dot in each. Yep. Right. So we are going to throw in a neuromancy? Mm hmm. Come back, a neuromancy. This, uh, the program that I'm using in order to, uh, there. Primal. And your favorite and mine. 
need to do. I need to devote more RAM to this program, I think. And I have the RAM for it, I just haven't done it. Uh, so a Neuromancy, Primal, and uh, blah, 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 Spring. Hooray! So all of those are now on your sheet. All Yay! of them have one dot in them. Hooray! Now we move on to Realms. <laughs> Another one I haven't haven't really realms are a little easier so okay, cool. let me explain what realms are oh. yeah man give me oh that's not right. lazy everything's no I just want to fill in the dot, you bastard. Yeah, you dot. Son of a... Dot head. Son of a... Oh. Come on. Give me... Give me them dots. Give me them dots. Oh, Aragorn, I love it. I love... I love what you tweeted. Yay. What was tweeted? Uh, Aragorn tweeted the little rundown of, although maybe, yeah, she tweeted like a little graphic. Sophia, Autumn, she, Wilder, Seely, House, Liam, Mentor, Peacock. So, for realms, mm. this is how realms work. When you're casting a cantrip, you add the level that you have in the art, and then you add the level that you have in the appropriate realm. Okay. And you need to have the correct amount of a realm in order to affect something. So if I go to the realms, I'll point out that there are the realms are actor, bay, nature, prop, scene, and time. Now for actor, for instance, if you have one dot in actor, you can affect somebody who is a true friend. So your friends, your spouse, your brother, your kids. For the second level, it's a personal contact. So your boss, your coworkers, your neighbors, the kid who picked on you at school, the bartender at your favorite bar. For three, it's a familiar face. So somebody who you've seen around, not necessarily somebody who you've spoken to. The okay. regulars at your favorite bar, a local news anchor, a criminal you saw a story about on TV. For level four is a dire enemy. So a security guard at the place you're breaking into, a mugger, a vampire who attacks you at the club, the kid running to tattle on you to the teacher, somebody who's actively acting against you. And for level five is complete stranger. So somebody who you've never met before and you have no idea who they are. Now here's the deal. If you still want to affect somebody, but you don't have the right level in a realm, it costs you an extra glamour. So, for instance, let's say you had actor two, personal contact, but you wanted to affect somebody who's acting against you, a dire enemy. You still could. You just have, it costs you an extra glamour to cast the cantrip because you don't have that realm. So that's actor. Fey is for dealing with things of the dreaming. So a level one is a commoner. Her level two is a lofty noble. So, for instance, you. You can't affect yourself unless you have Fey too. For level three, a Chimera. So like your lizard would fall under this. For level four would be um, other stranger things of the dreaming, like goblins, water babies, Hana, ghosts. And for five, it's glamor itself, like a treasure or um, the balefire of a freehold, that kind of thing. In nature, number one is a base element. Number two is a raw material like uh, like unliving organic material like wood, rope, hemp. Number three, verdant forest, so living plants. Level four, animals. And level five, natural phenomena like a fog bank, a storm cloud, or a geothermal vent. And then you have prop. Prop is um, things that are made. 
So for the first level, it's clothing. Second level, it's a crafted tool, like a club or a knife. Level three, a mechanical device, like a gun or a skateboard. Level four, a complex machine, like a car or an oven. And level five, something arcane, like an x-ray machine, a television, an iPod, a computer, something that's really big. And then you have two modifier realms. One of them is seen, which lets you affect um, in a wider area around you. Mm -hmm. And one of them is time, which lets you do things such as um, increase the duration or uh, make it so that the cantrip operates on a delayed timer so you cast it and then it casts afterwards um, to make it so that you can cast a cantrip and then ca immediately activate a second time, that kind of thing. So this is a bit tougher. This is where the magic system gets a little interesting. So, do you have an idea? You have five dots in realms to spend. Jeez Louise. Um, I mean, I'm definitely going to want to put actor in there. I just don't know at what level. Okay. Um, Remember I'll that throw. it also makes up your pool. So even if you don't put in as many dots to be able to affect somebody without needing to spend extra glamour, it still increases the size of your pool when you cast the cantrip. Right. Um... I'm also thinking I should probably put something in Fae, maybe nature as well. I imagine that you're okay without taking prop based on what you have listed already. Yeah, I think you're right. So my recommendation- I, I would rather affect people than affect uh, things. Right. Generally it's the target, by the way. So like if you're using, um, primal on a person it would be um it would be the actor or fey but if you were using it on say the earth that would be nature okay that's gonna take some getting used to yep but i've never played here. a system like that before it's so cool Yay. uh oh yeah maybe scene hey hmm so my recommendation yes john if I were to if I were to throw it out there for you who um, I would say you should consider um, taking two levels in Fey, two levels in actor, one level in scene. Okay. And leave nature out of it for now. Yep. That yep. That works for me. Although it does make Will-O-Whisper a little harder for you to use if you don't have nature. That's That was why I was thinking about it before. Right. So maybe, what about two in actor, one in fey, one in nature, one in scene? Then you wouldn't be able to affect yourself for what it's worth. That's okay. Okay. I think. So let's... Let's throw that out there and we can always come back. You can always also, you'll get experience. You'll also gain more. Good. That's buy you can, all the you things. You can buy shit. Okay. Perfect. I'm sorry, Krister for what it's worth. I don't get to play either. Um, so you said two an actor and then one in the rest, right? Yeah. Well, I think we'll be able to accommodate you. Yay! So let's... Give you your dots. <gasps> Boom. We'll export that. Let people see the updated sheet. Boom. Okay, now that we've got that, we're getting close to having a full character here. I am going to put on your sheet your birthrights and your frailties. This is as it relates to your kith. So you have, as a birthright, you have 
Unearthly Beauty. So with that, you get your two extra dots in appearance. If you ever invoke the weird, so in other words, um, pull in your changeling kind of self and blast it out into the world, essentially, letting people see who you are, um, the beauty becomes overpowering. So people have to roll willpower. If they fail, they can only stare at you <laughs> for a number of turns equal to your appearance. You also have Noble Bearing. That means that anybody casting a cantrip that's designed to make you look foolish fails. Straight up. You also can't botch etiquette or politics rolls. However, you have to deal with adoration. You're better with mortals than your Arcadian cousins, but... Anytime an autumn she successfully enchants or even meaningfully interacts with a mortal, that mortal's willpower is rolled against the difficulty of your glamour writing. If they fail, they start taking an extra interest in you. So they might start persistently offering you favors. They might start asking you personal questions. They may start even asking for your picture or your autograph. Um, if you botch, or if they botch, they develop an unhealthy fascination for you. Such as the curse of being hot. With great power, et cetera, great et cetera. Power. It was great responsibility. Now, there is also something we have to select an antithesis for you. Ooh. That's a big word. A big old word. So the way that you gain banality in this game, there are certain things that'll cause you to what they call trigger a banality roll. Um, and if you fail that roll, you get a dot, essentially. So killing another changeling, um, ending a changeling's mortal life, you gotta roll banality. If you wield cold iron, banality. If you ravage someone, banality. But there's one thing that is personal to you which causes you to roll banality so this is something that count that runs counter to the core of your being so anytime you encounter it it basically triggers you to need to roll so an example of an antithesis could be um anytime somebody uh starts putting down music like i hate country music and that would be enough to really kind of get to you like how could you not appreciate music? And that would cause you to start rolling for banality. So is there anything that you can think of that you're like, that would be an interesting thing for me to put up with? Um, I think something to do with uncleanliness. Like... I think she's got a real thing about things needing to be like clean. Um, so maybe, uh, however, however. So here's here's some examples. Yeah. Interfering with the play of children, breaking an object of great beauty, um, wearing a suit and tie on her mortal body giving someone a false compliment. So you could, seeing something that's untidy, I think would trigger way too often. Yeah, but not, not be... seeing something that's untidy, but like being forced to stay in a, in like accommodations that are, that are untidy. Yeah, so that are, that maybe it's, um, if you yourself are forced to feel unclean. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. So then your For antithesis, now. I'm going to say, feeling unclean. <laughs> unclean, unclean. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dark Elven. And Kung Fu Fenris, oh, I know. It's, yeah. Ooh, what's this? Sophia Scaly, 
Scarf unfurled, taking her seat in on the stage of the world, wisps of dreams weaving the strings, chorus calling potential unseen, future hopes yet to be, her tune muses kiss, but only to the clean. Hey, well done. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. So, we also have to pick for you a musing threshold. So, when you are uh, inspiring a dreamer, this is mm -hmm. like your specialty. This is the thing that you're really good at. Yeah. So here are your options. Inspire creativity, create hope, create love, create calm, foster trust, help those in need, foster dreams. And in terms of fostering dreams, Mm -hmm. uh like what what are we talking about in terms of in terms of dreams so fostering dreams would be like um if i came to you and said yeah i really think that you could be an actor like you've got the skills for it i think that you you could make it on the on the stage and then you're like maybe i could be an actor and you look up the sky and your eyes are full of stars that would be fostering dreams yeah so i would like to say uh fostering dreams please so your musing threshold is fostering dreams. Your hey. antithesis is feeling unclean. <laughs> Which is a very she antithesis to have. Cat and Daff is convinced you're going to be Lady Sophia Kofefe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Um, How to the queen of filth. Boo! The queen of garbage. Boo! Boo! <sighs> Threshold, I enjoy a nice Fosters. <laughs> well done, Ian. <laughs> All right. So now we get into your merits, flaws, and bonus points. Oh my goodness. Here's More this... thinking. Oh yeah, more thinking. Yeah, you, you're fucked now. <laughs> So, for merits and thaw, merits and thaws, merits and flaws, mm -hmm. these can be purchased using bonus points. Flaws give you bonus points to spend. Right. Yes. And after you've done, so you can either gain freebie points by taking flaws, or you can spend them by taking merits. But in general, you don't gain or um you don't gain merits or flaws by spending experience i can give them to you but you don't typically buy them so essentially these are things that you buy now or never oh my god <laughs> so let me tell you how much freebie points cost for abilities, that's things like alertness, drive, enigmas, two points per dot. For arts, five points per dot. For attributes, also five points per dot. Backgrounds you can buy at the cost of one per dot. If you want to start with more glamour in your pool, that's three points per dot. Realms, two points per dot. Willpower, two points per dot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and and now the guardian theme comes back on. Um, and I think Kate just joined us. Hello, Kate. So, Kate, people are saying, "Oh no, we're gonna have another party without any crafts." Um, and I told them, "Sorry, guys, that's just the way it is." So you might have some splaining to do. <laughs> anyway, um, do you have anything on your sheet currently that you're like, oh, fuck, I totally wanted to do this. And yes, Ian's correct. It's at this point that now you can go above three on your ability. Right. This is true. Thank you, Ian. Um, so I know I want a, I want one dot in Dreamer. So I may as well do that. Yep. Uh, I, so that, that is... We'll throw that on there. Okay. Now remember, so since I gave one. you an extra dot um, in, you know, 
dots. Resources, right? And resources. That's right. So then um, I'm down two dots. Or of no, my freebie. I sorry, I gave you an extra merit point so that you could learn French if you so chose. Oh yes, I would like to learn French. All right. So French, you've spent three. But that was but that was free. Well, it's right? free in that I gave you sixteen freebies instead of fifteen. I gave you an extra dot so you could learn French. Right. So you have spent three of your oh, sixteen. Oh, so I've spent three. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I understand. Um. Okay. 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 Let's see if I can see my thing from where it is. Uh. I just hey. spent the days in crafts. Give me a minute to wash off the sawdust. Huh. Um, John, do you have any um, recommendations based off of what we have discussed so far? All right. So here are some things that I'll point out. He has some ideas. So the first thing is that if you want to be somebody who is exceptional at a thing, currently you're very good at several different things. You're very good at empathy, expression, leadership, etiquette, and performance. Did you want to be truly exceptional at any of those things? Uh, I Oh, yes. I did want to bring um, performance up to four. Okay. So that costs um, two freebies. Okay. So you now have 11 remaining. Okay. Um, okay, I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, I would like to put, hmm, maybe one in subterfuge. Okay. So you want to learn how to lie at least a little bit? Yeah, at least a little bit. And that's another two, right? Yep. Put okay. you at nine remaining. Okay. Um, now, I would also suggest that at this yeah. point in time, it may be worth it for you to consider um, if there's any merits that you wish to take. Right. The other thing is, if you want to add anything in your backgrounds, for instance, I don't know if you're planning on with your group to potentially bundle together something for like a retinue or a freehold. Hey, uh, Kate and Scott. I know we were chatting about things, but did anything get actually decided in terms of if we were going to pool our points together? Let me know in the comments section below. <laughs> oh, Enigmas as a fairy mentor. Krister has a suggestion. Enigmas as what an ability. Um, Enigmas are... Let me get you the official... Oh, we made no decision. Perfect. Do you think so, I should uh, I should save some points? Let me know, yay or nay. So Enigmas represents a character's ability to solve logic problems, puzzles, and mysteries. With it, she can create or break ciphers, utilize puzzle boxes, or match wits with a particularly confounding nemesis. Enigmas is essential for divining hidden trods, deciphering dreams and prophecy, and answering riddles of the Dreaming's Guardian. So to give you an idea, at level one, you enjoy the occasional Sudoku puzzle. At level two, you always know who done it before the big reveal. At level three, you can find multiple correct answers to most riddles. Level four, you can reliably discover the secrets to opening trods. And level five, you understand the deepest mysteries of the dream. Damn. That does sound pretty interesting. Enigmas is brilliant in the dreaming. Okay, well, that's a good enough reason for me. Um, so where is Enigmas? Enigmas is a knowledge. It's a knowledge, hey? Okay, let's so do it. Put a dot in that? Yeah. All right, you are at seven freebie points remaining. Okay. Um, if you wanted to be super out. hot, this is your last opportunity <laughs> to do so. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> you could spend five freebie points and gain an extra dot in appearance, putting you at six. Uh. Okay, wait, people are people are suggesting things. Hold on. So Eric suggesting 
Because I Think I Can, which is six points, and Voice of a Songbird, two points. Okay, where are these merits? So those are merits. Let me see. Let me try to find them here. So remember that merits are things that I have some, you know, I may choose to allow or not allow. Um, so here's, uh, voice of a songbird. Mm -hmm. The satyrs say your voice could charm apples from the trees. You have perfect pitch and can sing a cappella without missing a single note or going mm -hmm. off key. Even when only speaking, your voice has a seductive quality that attracts people to you. Whenever you make a role that involves inspirational speaking or singing, you are at a minus two difficulty. Ooh. That's a two point merit. That's pretty good. Let's, let's make a note of that. Okay. And also mentioned is, uh, what was the other one that she mentioned? There were two that she mentioned. So she mentioned, uh, soul because of the I muse think I can, and also anyone. because I think I can, which is expensive. So, because I think I can, a six point merit. Whenever you declare you're using a point of willpower and roll for successes, your self-confidence may allow you to gain the benefit of that expenditure without losing the willpower point. You do not lose the point of willpower unless you fail your roll. And this also prevents you from botching. This merit may only be used when the difficulty of your roll is six or higher. So you know how you can spend a point of willpower to gain an extra success? Yeah. If you don't fail the roll, you get to keep that point of willpower. Well, that's cool. Uh, okay, and then the last one is Soul of the Muse. Soul of the Muse is, you are an inspiration to creators of all types. Whether you are artistically gifted or not, other artists find it far easier to create masterworks when you are around. If you are in the presence of any creator, whether you are acting as a model, providing counsel, or singing a song, that creator reduces the difficulty to create his work by three. This creative stimulation applies to works of wonder and destruction alike, as you inspire all. Okay, I like that. Um, that's a that four-point merit. That's a four-point. Uh, so would I have any left if I bought that? So you have seven points remaining. I have seven points. Okay. If you wanted to be mega hot, if this was indeed a goal of yours, that would cost you five, and you'd have two remaining. But remember that you can take flaws to gain an extra couple of points. Um, you could potentially buy because I think I can, but that would cost almost all of your remaining flavors. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to do that one. I think I would okay. like Soul of the Muse. So Soul of the Muse costs four. That puts you down to three freebie points. Yeah. <sighs> What's my so hotness currently at? Your hotness is currently at five. My hotness is at five. That's pretty good. If it's you pretty, took a two point pretty, flaw, mm -hmm. you could have your hotness at six. I don't know. I'm not necessarily saying you need to. <laughs> the second dot in Faye would cost two freebie points. You have three remaining. This is so fun making a character with a bunch of people giving great suggestions. This is like, this is the fucking best. Um, second dot in Faye. So indecisive is a flaw. When you're given an opportunity, you know you've got to act quickly or it just might pass you by, yet you can't seem to make up your mind fast enough. It takes you a while to sort through all your options, examine the pros and cons, and then decide which is the best decision. You must make a willpower roll whenever your character must make a decision. Otherwise, you remain undecided about what to do. Yes, I absolutely want that because it's going to be the easiest thing to roleplay in the fucking world. So. I should point out that there are ways for you to shed flaws. So if you decide if you, if it becomes clear that you shouldn't be indecisive any longer, you may end up buying off that flaw. So it's not like uh, you're stuck with it permanently if you don't want to. Real Brick Wall brings up an excellent point. What counts as a decision? Are we like, should I get out of bed this morning? No, it would be okay. a decision would be like the for instance, you would have difficulty ordering in restaurants, but I won't make you roll willpower for that. Like, that's not a significant decision. 
you would have to roll willpower for a significant decision like um if somebody says um we can either chase after the bad guy or we can try to put out this burning building and i'm like oh but the innocence oh but the bad guy right and so you would have to roll willpower or you wouldn't be able to choose (sighs) amazing amazing so this now puts you up you now have six freebie points left uh, which puts you back great. in mega hotness territory <laughs> which brings us back <laughs> so here's a couple of suggestions that i can make for you yes the first if it was indeed something that you wanted if you wanted to be supremely hot then you can put five of your freebie points into appearance putting your appearance to six and then use one and use that as a i will add this to a pool if you're fellow players choose to like get together for a freehold say Mm -hmm. you could also not buy the appearance in which case you have six left you could get an extra level in fey for your realms you could buy an extra two dots and abilities you could um increase your glamour or your willpower if you so chose yes that's a good idea but I would recommend holding at least one dot in um, in reserve. In reserve. In case, huh? Because if your fellow players are like, we're all going in on a freehold, and you're like, I'm not gonna, well, then they can lord that over you. Uh, another suggestion says Aragorn. Oh, boy. If I'm not limiting the number of flaws. Oh, and noble. Once you held near absolute power in a freehold, but those days are gone. Perhaps you stepped down or your city fell to a rival court. It matters little now. What matters is your replacement is aware of your prior position and his concerns you might be trying to make a comeback. If the new ruler sees an opportunity to get rid of you, she just might take it. And, and then Krista also makes a good point remembrance. about remembrance. How much would remembrance be? That's one per dot of remembrance because it's a background. Okay, let's give myself, could I afford one dot in Remembrance, go up to level two Fae, and have some leftover? You'd have three leftover. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. So we're giving you a dot in Remembrance. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just my fly, Aragorn. Incidentally, we're going to clean this sheet up. So, like, don't worry that the sheet kind of doesn't look, like, amazing right now. Um, that's uh, partially just because we're doing it on the fly. Like, we can, we'll, we'll make it look nice once we get to that point. Um, oh, should I get another dot in a language? If you wish to learn a different language, you certainly could. Uh, but I also don't. Okay, so how does it work? You have three freebie points left. Yeah. So with those freebie points that you have, you can do the following. Mm -hmm. Um, you can gain, um, you can gain another ability and then have one dot left over for a group thing, like freehold, for instance. Yeah. Um, You can buy an extra dot of willpower and have a dot left over. Mm -hmm. You can buy an extra dot of glamour. That costs three. However, I can say that you used your um, wilder extra dot on glamour instead of willpower, bought the extra willpower for two points, and then have one dot left over. So if you wanted to have a dot left over, you can buy an ability. You can buy a um, point of glamour or a point of willpower. Or another dot in a realm. Yeah, let's do so. We'll go. We'll go with what you suggested for the willpower glamour. Mm-hmm. So. So you're gonna we'll get an extra dot of glamour. Yeah. Okay. And then have one dot left over. Yeah. All right. That's what I'd like to do. So I'm not putting that extra dot. I know that it's there. I'm not gonna put it um, on the sheet yet because you don't know necessarily what you're spending it on. Yes. 
she took even spend it on something? she took willpower originally um Aragwen, so now i'm basically assuming that she took it as glamour instead and bought an extra dot of willpower yay so the sheet as stands is now complete Woo! as near as i can tell uh i might take more flaws later if you take but... more flaws then that's up to you i mean yeah you can you can look at it if you so choose i think i just need some time to read over everything and then and Absolutely. then decide so you can again anything on this sheet is changeable right so you're not locked into anything at this point in time mm -hmm. um you are um you're pretty well rounded you have some things that you're quite good at um but there's some things that you're pretty hopeless at that's okay it's totally fine um and you have that one dot left over so that's the sheet ah, i'm so excited now we're going to have to at some point discuss um more in detail about your background yeah right like who you are and what you've done and oh, some of that is also going to come from the discussions that i'll have with the other players um notably things like how you guys met um we are going to play some of that in the prelude but there are some things that we'll have to figure out before then especially if you guys have a pooled thing like if you decide that you're all pooling in for a freehold and we have to determine where that freehold is is it like a bar or is it like an abandoned building or a garden or whatever like that's up to, to you um but that's conversations that we can have um in the meantime lady sophia ap liam ah. as we're choosing we we can basically say ap liam works out oh. quite well i will remind everybody that whatever you end up choosing for your last name uh you will always be the lady sophia you're never the lady last name lady last name nice to see you again haven't been at bridge lately sorry <laughs> um laurent i know you've been uh john john if i may yes um Laurent's been very uh, diligent in attempting to sketch a character that I have really not helped him at all in describing. <laughs> okay. So the one thing I'll say, Laurent, is like I haven't I haven't gone into too too much detail about what I want her to look at like, but I do know that I want her to have light purple hair, long light purple hair. So that's long light that's purple hair got purple hair you'll because if i ever design... cosplay this chick then i get to dye my hair purple hooray you'll, you'll also be able to um design your voile uh that would be the chimerical clothing that you first crystallized in, that you always ah. have access to so you can do that as well fabulous anyway yeah so there it awesome is here there's your sheet all over my pinterest yay thank you john um so now that we have that sheet there, um, we'll have to spend another couple of these sessions with Kate and with Scott, as they will have to create their characters as well. Um, when they're not currently creating their characters, then we'll have to go over how I'm going to build the rest of the setting around them, which I will basically do that with you guys. She sheet, 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 she sheet. There. Oh my God. Enjoy. Jesus. Jesus. She sheet. Uh, yes. John, did you see the picture of the lizard that I shared? No, I did not. Okay, well, if you want to know what what her companion looks like, it looks like that. That's what Mab looks like. Queen Mab, oh. if you will. Uh, Mwanza Flat-Headed Agama. Yeah, also known as. Check out the nickname for it. The nickname for it is Agama Mwanze. Keep reading. Spider-Man Agama? Yes! 
<laughs> there is a real Queen Mab. She is the queen of the kingdom of apples, real brick wall. She shills satyrs by the seashore. She's... She shills satyrs by the seashore. She shills satyrs by the seashore. She so she shills satyrs by the seashore. It's it's a little different. Oh my god! Oh, I know. Uh, all right. Well, that is the end of RPG Clinic for this week. Uh, I have to thank Liz for coming on and being a total pal. Thanks for having me, John. Uh, you're gonna have to look forward to suffering through scott and kate doing this as well can't wait um, to creep on their streams yes creeping on them streams yep. uh but also we can be pretty sure that it'll be difficult for them to top you in terms of the hotness <laughs> watch scott do it i swear to god yeah, he's gonna be like mm, six he just seven, sinks all of his well. dots into appearance <laughs> just because he can um, I don't know. May they, he may choose to play a she. Who knows? He may. Uh, so Krister is is thinking that Kate might maybe a Selkie or a Slua, and Scott may be a Boggan or a Troll. Mm. Um, changing the creeping. Um, Kate or Scott, do you want to confirm or deny Krister's guesses? Um. In the meantime, Kate may or may not be um, streaming tomorrow, depending on finishing the set. Uh, if she doesn't, I may actually uh, do so myself. Kung Fu Fenris, you can say please no elf game, but I'm not going to tell my players that they can't choose to play the kit that they want. Um, but somehow I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, if the boss denied. Yikes. Way to go, denied Scott. what? What's he denying? He's denying revealing whether or not he's going to be playing one of Krister's guesses. What a dick! But Kate is saying that one of those is correct. Oh. One of his four guesses is correct, but she's not saying which one. Um, at least correct for now. In the meantime, guys, whether or not Kate streams tomorrow, um, Friday, I do believe we may have some punchy action. You're damn right. So we'll have that to look forward to. If Kate does not stream tomorrow, I may just steal it. We'll see. Kate just killed Elf Game. <laughs> oh, and 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 uh, final reminder that Saturday is Punchy Book Club. So if you haven't read V for Vendetta, there's still time. If you, you want to join. 12 o'clock on my Punchy channel. Punchy Book Club. And then on Sunday, we will be playing Exalted. What game? I don't know. I don't know. I've been playing Shovel Knight recently. Um, either way, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, what time is Book Club? And yes, At thank noon. you for tuning in, Krister. So noon Eastern Daylight Time. But otherwise, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you soon. Either Twitter or Twitch. <laughs>